So I've been meaning to talk about this game for so long, but I've never really had the opportunity to tell you about this. To be honest, even if I did have the time, I wouldn't be able to find much info, which is why it's here. There's a game by the name of Utahono Tatari. God, that was hard to say. Utahono Tatari. Utahono Tatari. Utahono Tatari. I got it. Got it. All right. Anyways, a classic indie RPG maker game that's way more popular in Japan than over here. That's most likely due to the fact that the game never had a proper translation. And if there is one, it's very hard to find because I had no luck myself. And because of that, finding out what the game is about is even trickier. Something about a young girl who lost her mother or something like that. She's traumatized, has to go to a mansion. It's hard to say. The game is an RPG maker horror game, a, a sort of subgenre in the horror indie community, often compiled of games made in Japan that are seemingly innocent, but devolve into something more sinister. All of them being made in RPG Maker, which is a fairly powerful tool for any beginner programmers that just want to make an RPG. Many different famous games have used RPG Maker. If you're thinking to yourself that you don't know any RPG Maker games or RPG Maker horror video games, then let me remind you, there are games like Yume Nikki, uh, Corpse Party, Ao Oni, The Witch's House, Ib, Mad Father, Angels of Death, uh, Hello Charlotte, Stray Cat Crossing, I mean there is a ton, it'd be very surprising if you've never heard of any of them. It is a very popular category, especially in Japan. This one, unfortunately, just sort of went under the radar, I think for most American fans. The game is just very similar to Aoni in premise, a young girl walking around a giant mansion with tons of monsters stuck in a basement, but the similarities kind of end there. Most of the game's scares come from the unsettling photos found throughout the mansion and a really creepy flesh statue that hunts you down all around the mansion. The game is split up into two parts. Our main focus will be on the second part because there's honestly a ton of hidden little secrets about this game that are fascinating, weird, and above all, creepy. One in particular is this strange glitch that occurs when you're walking around the perimeter of this shrine. <laughs> I saw this first on r slash creepy gaming from user you're not real. He came across this glitch just when he was playing the game normally, didn't really do anything spectacular or anything out of the ordinary, but he just suddenly got this very creepy error message you just saw. The only way he could get out of that screen was if he just exited the game, which he did. He first assumed that this was just part of the game, but apparently it's, it's not. It was just a very random glitch, or maybe it was just a very random easter egg that the player somehow set off. When we see the screenshots posted by You're Not Real, we can see a few notable pictures. First is this jumble of letters that have no significance whatsoever. It looks like the game's trying to spell something out, or make something legible, but it's struggling to do so. And that's exactly the case. As later on, the poster then fixed this error screen by switching his system locale to Japan. At first, he thought it would fix the bug, but it didn't. It just fixed the jumbled up letters. As some people suspected, the game was actually trying to write out in Japanese, but just couldn't. Now, this was legible. Reddit user It's Rain Time, sorry, It's, it's Rain Time? It's, I, I'm not a Xenoblades fan. Anyways, he was able to translate what was posted on the screen. It's mostly a mess that doesn't make much sense. Some creepy sentences thrown in with generic computer error messages, I think. Here's a quick and dirty translation. Please confirm. Location. Date. Utahan no Tatari 2. Severing the arm. The data is being damaged. Possibility is... Ah, please stop. Utano, I will kill you. 
error frame process. Can't really read because it's so garbled. 904, 239, etc. A system error is occurring. Your face around interior 3 is turning, warping. Not sure about this one. The buttons inputs courage 33333 confirm GY ampersat A Utano. No! Shizumi, you are bad. Could be evil as well. Help, help. The writing is undergoing read in testing 33333. Given the newfound context, it is very easy to say that the game is intentionally trying to scare you. That, or the creator of this game, had a very fun way of creating an error screen. The second part of this Easter egg that's really noticeable was the woman that shows up at the end. I don't care who you are, but if you saw this while playing this game in the middle of the night, with your lights off and nobody at home, you definitely shit yourself. This is a horrifying image, and while it's not totally random as much of the game uses real life imagery in order to spook you, the fact that this just shows up after a random crash screen it would honestly scare anyone, especially with that horrible noise. What's worse is that she's almost... Well, she just seems dead. Like a rotting corpse with a contentious face. As far as I know, this image isn't found anywhere in the game other than during this error screen. It's unknown who this is, or whether or not this is an image of a real dead woman. It could be assumed that it's the body of the dead mother, but because I have no translation of the game, I can only speculate exactly what the game is all about, and whether or not this has any significance. Until then, this part of the game will remain unsolved, and honestly, I'm, I'm secretly hoping this gets enough attention to the point that someone out there makes an English patch for the game. I don't know about you, but this has gotten me 10 times more interested in this game I otherwise never would have known existed. So hopefully, someone out there can help us out, translate this game, and maybe, once and for all, we can figure out the mystery of this horrifying lady, of this strange glitch that nobody seems to have the answer to. You know what I hardly cover on this channel? Paranormal shit. I love paranormality. I, I mean, I am obsessed with voodoo, black magic, ghost encounters, all that good shit. Sure, I might not be totally convinced that it's real. Hell, I hardly think any ghost video whatsoever are real at all. But they're still a lot of fun to watch. Some of you might already know about the time that I covered the ghost bell, a, a bell that seemingly rang by itself with absolutely no aid whatsoever. The ghost bell video is very mundane and lasts forever until the, the bell finally rings. For me, this has been one of the most convincing videos of ghost activity ever. And I still get messages every day by people who think they've solved the bell. One of the most common Common theories is the spirit bell magic trick. Basically, it's this magician's tool that is used to trick people into thinking that there's a ghost in the room while commencing a seance. With the push of a button, the bell rings by itself. That could be the solution to this whole thing, but the problem is the spirit bell looks very intricate and has a clear mechanism underneath when seen from below and has a very odd shape to it if it doesn't. Something which the ghost bell I covered does not have. There is no mechanism underneath and it's definitely not built like a spirit bell, so I don't know. Either way, I still wanted to cover some spooky ghost images that I thought was worth some coverage. Now, I am a skeptic at heart. Like I said, I can't be convinced so easily that something is a ghost video or photo. I say roughly 97% of ghost videos are just people pulling strings in this direction or that direction. Uh, notice how in every ghost video, things are always pulled in one direction. Like a cup always moves to the right but never to the left. It, it is always tugged this way or that way by the handle. Yeah. That's pretty sus already. Also, with programs such as After Effects being so easily available to get, people have gotten better at adding ghosts into any video whatsoever. And if not, well, just get one of your friends to pretend to be a ghost or pretend that somehow dust particles are orbs of spiritual energy. Now, while most ghost videos and photos can be easily explained by just saying it's dust or just pareidolia, sometimes there are just photos that aren't so easily disregarded. Take, for example, 
our main photo of the night found on r slash ghosts in which the original poster states that their photographer was taking photos at an abandoned psych ward while at the nurse's quarters the photographer took this very eerie photo on the far left of the photo you can see what seems to be a distorted person with an incomprehensible face the photographer swears that there was no one with them that day and that this apparition has no right to be there now I don't like to immediately believe someone's word when they say that there was no one there or that they had some spooky photo and it was only just them and their friend then the third person showed up Ooh, humans generally have a bad memory and often misconstrue details to better suit their narrative it's what happened to this infamous photo of what looks to be an alien or ghost right behind this little girl the person who took this photo the girl's father that is swore that there was nothing there there was nobody there at the time yet with modern technology we can see that the martian now resembles a woman in address which was then confirmed to be the girl's mother yet what's fascinating about this photo to me at least is just how horrifying the absolute terrifying face on this supposed ghost often when we see ghost photos they more or less have that typical human-like face or something intentionally creepy looking but this this is eldritch horror kind of shit like my my brain cannot process what i'm looking at it's almost like as if it is a face just upside down and just blurry as you can see what looks to be an eyebrow and an eye just above it I, I, and you can even make out some of the details of the shirt this quote unquote nurse is wearing now of course when it comes to photos it's always hard to say whether or not you can trust a photographer a photographer who we know nothing about nor do we even know if they exist it could totally just be fabricated uh, an original story made by the reddit poster and the story itself could just be a total lie whatever the case may be fake or real this photo is amongst the most unsettling photos i have ever seen did you guys know that I actually ego search every now and again? Yeah, I got problems. But while I was looking up my own name, I found this one strange post on Reddit that mentioned me. Reddit user Pulpo Datin Tight. This I can't read. It's like five o'clock in the morning. Okay, give me a break. Now he's a fan of horror content, and apparently he's a fan of my videos as well. Thanks, man or woman. You know, doesn't matter. You're cool. Anyway, apparently while watching one of my videos, because I'm really cool like that. An ad popped up randomly that featured a disfigured woman zoomed in real close while she was whispering directly into the mic. Now, according to Pulpo, the woman was speaking in Spanish, particularly Spaniard Spanish. It shocked Pulpo as their volume was set to high. That and they also have a sort of phobia for deformed faces. The ad itself ran for about a minute or so, but it is implied that because the audio was loud and the face was creepy, Popo noped out of there real fast. After all, you can skip most ads, especially ones that are very, very long. Now, it's easy to assume that because they were watching something spooky, it would obviously lead to spookier ads. YouTube, after all, has a targeted ad system, which goes through your browsing history as well as what videos you tend to watch. What's really disturbing, however, is that it followed Pulpo to another video. But this time, while they were watching something cute. Now, of course, watching one cute video obviously does not suddenly shift YouTube's personalized ads in a minute. But the fact that they saw it again is still pretty disturbing. The ad is also relatively long, about a minute or so. If we had known what exactly this ad was trying to portray or sell, then hunting down the video would be a breeze. But that wasn't ever mentioned. I have mentioned Popo about this ad asking if they speak Spanish or is a native Spanish speaker, and if they remember what exactly the ad was saying. The only thing we can get out of this post was this cruelly drawn interpretation of what the ad might have looked like. In it, we see this disfigured burnt lady in a dark room with a microphone, and whether or not this was supposed to be ASMR is still a mystery. Hell, to be honest, this might not even be an ad aimed at selling anything at all, but rather some strange channel that was promoting itself. That is, after all, very possible. I remember a few years ago, Poppy was making ads on YouTube about her channel, only they weren't videos specifically made to be ads, just random videos from her channel promoting itself onto other channels. 
And you see that nowadays too. I get my odd share of ads that are made directly by YouTubers who have like less than 2,000 subs, but still want to advertise their channel. With enough money, it's even possible to have hour-long episodes of a show online to be an ad, which is super obnoxious, especially if you're someone like me who likes to leave their TV on with YouTube in the background when you sleep at night. Trust me, waking up to an obnoxious ad featuring someone's stupid Let's Play compilation of them screaming over scary games is much more frequent than you think, but I'm getting off track here. In the end, it's up to you, the viewers, to tell me if you've ever seen this ad, especially to my viewers in Latin America, who I know love spooky videos. This one is a last minute entry. As I finished up my script and was ready to record, I was greeted by this message from the user RARXD on Twitter, telling me about a strange TikTok involving a woman in her car receiving a strange transmission over her radio. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that sounds kind of familiar. Hmm. So, Snackquarius is the original poster of this video, and since then, this video has already garnered over 800,000 likes and 23,000 comments in just a matter of two days. And here, of course, is the video in question. I hope it does it again. Am I fucking tripping right now? Ah, oh, what is happening? The attention it garnered brought on a slew of theories, as well as responses as to what this transmission could have meant. Unfortunately, due to the staticky nature of the broadcast, it's difficult to make out what the person on the other end is saying. Something about the time council, maybe time capsule? Several TikTok users have duetted with the original video, trying their best to decipher what it is this person is saying on the other end. Everyone who's responded has a slightly alternate version of what the broadcast is saying, but overall most people agree on a few key points. Whoever is broadcasting this message is in distress and is asking for anyone to help. There is mention of something revolving around time, either be it a time council or time capsule. Personally, to me, it sounds like time capsule, which if you don't know, it's basically like a loot box that's only going to open a few years from now. Look, I tried Gen Zing that definition of time capsule because just, you know, we're talking about TikToks. Most of you are Gen Z. How'd I do? Anyway, it also seems that most users also agree that the voice said something or someone has escaped and is currently in pursuit of this particular person. Afterwards, there are numbers being spouted out, the numbers which cannot be unanimously agreed upon. Finally, it ends with this, please hurry, I don't have much time. The broadcast then suddenly ends. Now, as I said before, with the massive amount of popularity this has gotten, many have wondered what it is, where it's from, and how was this even discovered? Obviously, there will be people who will say it's a hoax, that this person is just clearly making it up. But I kind of don't believe that. Weird transmissions can be picked up by absolutely anyone. You don't even need to be a tech expert to accidentally stumble upon these radio frequencies, which, while aren't as plenty as maybe back in the 80s or 90s, can still be found every now and again by anyone with a car radio. Just take my previous venture with another freaky radio broadcast, one I affectionately called the Crying Radio Man. At the time, it was unclear to me what exactly was going on. A crying man over the radio? Was it some sort of hoax? An ARG? A, a callback to an old radio station that was supposed to be haunted? Well, while it's not 100% confirmed, I have made an update video since then where I stated that it was most likely a case of a bad radio interference. See, as soon as I found out that the crying radio man came from a specific movie called Suntan, which was suggested to me by a certain user, I totally forgot your name, but thank you so much, I love you. In Suntan, there was a man who cries towards the end of the film. I won't describe exactly what happens at the end that made him cry, mainly because it might get me in a bit of trouble, but also because, you know, don't want to spoil the movie, and uh, really, if you want to know, just click on the video on the corner right there, top right, just click there, and you can be sent over and you can find out exactly what the crying is all about. 
But back to this one video here. Knowing all of what I just said, I think it's safe to assume that it might be what's happening here. We can't really be too sure, can we? The only way we can find out whether or not this was interference from a different radio frequency is if we can find the source of the transmission. If we can find out the source of the transmission, maybe we can find out exactly why it was played. Yet, as fun as it is to think about all the possibilities that this could be a time traveler coming to warn us about some horrible future event, let's be real, it isn't. And we already have an update as to what it is. In fact, I'll just let Snackquarius go ahead and tell you all what actually happened. Hello, for anyone who wanted an update in regards to the radio situation, um, the radio station Fine Music Sydney have released a press release or a media release on the website uh, and it is confirming that it is in fact the escape rooms audio that was playing on my radio for whatever reason. So if that was your guess, um, you win a gold star and I don't know, fairy snaps for you babes. Um, if you are wanting to read the press release, just look up Fine Music Sydney, it's on the website. But yeah, thanks for coming along for the ride babes. I know it's a bit anticlimactic, but that is the point of many mysteries. It's all just a bunch of mysteries that I either can't solve, am unable to solve, or have already solved, but I just really want to share this with you. I think personally it was a really funny idea to think that maybe this was some mysterious time traveler, but radios are a very finicky thing, and they could just sometimes pick up some weird shit that, well, nobody really asked for. Hopefully you guys still enjoyed this episode of Mini Mysteries, and I really do hope that you guys come back for Traumathon, which is just around the corner, and if you don't know what Traumathon is, well, basically I dive deep into our childhoods and remember all the horrible things that we saw as kids that really scared the shit out of us. Now, that'll be coming in October 1st, and I hope most of you, if not all of you, will be there. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'll see you guys then. Love you guys so much. Goodbye.